Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. While we are talking about cum, <laughs> we are going to play around with the D a bit more today. And I know you Chris love the D and I also know you guys, you boys out there love the D. I always see it in the comments. You always want daddy's D. <laughs> That sounds fucking disgusting. But we are going to do it. It's going to be real fun. The French equation is the cool way, okay? The Dr. Payam reference right here. But before we get into the main video, I would like to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, IceGuysoft, the creators of PDF Element for sponsoring this video. PDF Element is a tool that allows you to basically do everything with PDF that you want. So you can edit it however you want. No matter if you want to edit one, convert or annotate it, this tool is definitely the most sophisticated one on the market right now, in my opinion. I got the chance to test it out over the course of a few weeks and I highly enjoy using it since it's so multifunctional. The strongest points of the program are, in my opinion, the functionality to edit the text in each and every PDF document and that you can also permutate the pages however you like. You can also draw into the documents and thus sign them. In comparison to Adobe Acrobat, PDF Element is way more affordable at the moment and superior in my opinion when it comes to the functionality in general. So if you want to try it out, if this feels like it's something for you, then take a look at the top of the description. You can try it out for free or you can get 50% off this program. Okay, it's, it's really a steer right now. And now I'm going to write some stuff on the blackboard right here and then we can go ahead and talk about the D a bit more. See ya. We are going to solve an actual differential equation with this today. Oh my goodness. And I haven't thought of one up until now. So um, at first, let me tell you something. I have said this as a little math nut. <laughs> okay, big, big D, math nut. Before, we can have our shift theorem right here. Okay, our exponential shift theorem. And I told you guys that if you know the roots of a polynomial, a polynomial in the D, then we can decompose this thing into its linear factors, product of linear factors. Meaning what we can also do is we can express this thing right here as e to the a times x. And then we are going to have the product of all the, okay, we are having an nth degree polynomial. So this right here is just a uh, Yeah, just the roots, okay? Um, also plus our a. This is what we have right here. I hope you understand where all of this comes from, okay? We can just decompose this right here. If we take our original polynomial, it's just d plus our lambdas right here, negative our lambdas, negative, okay? It really depends on your lambdas right here. But in normal case, you are going to have it negative because you want everything to go to zero, okay? And we are going to use this right here today. Now, let us go ahead and get started. I'm going to think of a differential equation, a really simple one at that. Okay, let's, let's work around with the signs a bit. So let's suppose we had an original differential equation and we are going to turn this into its linear factors. For example, the d minus two, uh, d plus one times y being equal to t, for example. It's a differential equation with respect to t right here, or y. Okay, this is what we have right here. And if you were to factor all of this out, you would end up with, okay, you are going to have d double prime and then negative d, negative two times y being equal to t. So if you are interested in the original differential equation right here, where this linear factor decomposition stems from. And now we are going to go through this process right here, okay? we have turned this into linear factors and this right here is extremely powerful, okay? Because what we can do, we can assume our y to be of exponential form, okay? Why is this useful? Because if we were to express this as some function phi, for example, times e to the something x, we could bring this e to the something to the outside and in this process, we could manipulate this a to be of the form of our root right here, of one of our roots, okay? Meaning if we would have negative lambda one plus lambda one, we would get rid of this and we were left with d of phi. We are going to go through this process. It's going to make perfect sense in a second, okay? We are going to define our y to be, okay, some function phi, for example. We are going to need more phi's. I'm going to call it phi one. 
and we want to eliminate our root right here. Our root is of the form d minus negative one. This is our root right here. So what we would need in order for eliminate this, for in order for us to eliminate this root right here is e to this root times t, meaning negative t. I hope this did make sense to you. Now we can just make use of our exponential shift theorem right here. It's of this form. This right here is still a polynomial, but decomposed in its into its linear factors. Meaning if we were to bring this e to the negative t to the outside, we would be left with e to the negative t. Then, now, here comes the most important part. If you drag this to the outside, you have to distribute this a, this factor right here, into all of the linear factors. Meaning we would be left with d minus 2 minus 1. Okay, this is the root right here. And then we are going to have, I'm going to write everything out, d plus 1, that's the original term, minus 1 phi 1 being equal to t. And this is pure magic right here, because this thing right here overall is just a differential of phi 1. And now we can go through the very same process once again. This is absolutely cool. So if you were to take a look at this thing right here, this is nothing but d minus 3 at the moment. We are going to identify our d of phi 1 as a new function and we are going to call it this root right here, so 3, this right here is our root at the moment, the thing behind the negative sign. So e to the 3 times t times some new function phi 2, okay? So that's equivalent to saying we have e to the negative t and then d minus 3. This thing, like I said a second ago, is going to be e to the 3 times t, okay? This is our new root right here, times phi 2 being equal to t. Okay, we were redefining that. I'm going to write all of the new definitions out in a second. Okay, bear with me here. Now, once again, making use of the exponential shift theorem, going to drag this to the outside right here. Meaning, we are going to be left with e to the negative t, e to the 3 times t. Okay, this is going to result in e to the 2t. And then d minus 3 plus 3 phi 2 being equal to t. Meaning, we got rid of this thing right here. And now, our differential equation looks as follows. e to the 2 times t. Then we are going to have d phi 2. We are once again defying the system of mathematics being equal to t. Now, our exponential function is never equal to zero. So we can invert it, meaning multiplying both sides by e to the negative 2t. Thus, we have d phi 2 being equal to e to the negative 2 times t times t. Now, you could go ahead and integrate both sides with respect to t, but you could also plug in the definition for phi 2. Let us take a look what phi 2 actually was. We have e to the 3t phi 2 has been nothing but d phi 1. Meaning if we multiply both sides by e to the negative 3t, we would be left with phi 2 being equal to e to the negative 3t d phi 1. Now let us plug all of this in. That's equivalent to saying we have the differential of what we had down here, e to the negative 3t, I'm going to put it like this, d phi 1 being equal to e to the negative 2t times t. And now we are going to integrate both sides with respect to t, okay? And the cool thing is if you differentiate something and then integrate it right again in the same variable, we are just going to get rid of this d operator right here. It's the inverse of integration basically. Meaning this is the really cool thing. Now, if we integrate both sides, we are going to be left with the argument right here. e to the negative 3t d phi 1. And I want you guys to remember what phi 1 actually was. Our phi 1 right here was nothing but y times e to the t. I'm going to write this out. So this is e to the negative 3t d y e to the t. Okay? Just writing everything out. Being equal to, well, the integral of this thing, e to the negative 2t times t integrate with respect to t. And now here comes some simple integration 
in integration by parts, okay? So we need something to differentiate, something to integrate, plus, minus, plus, right? We are going to differentiate t, right here, it's going to go to zero, way faster, and then e to the negative t being integrated. So we are going to be left with negative one half e to the negative 2t. Okay, and then we are going to have one quarter e to the negative 2t. Meaning this integration is going to result in some arbitrary constant c, for example, I'm going to put it like this, and then negative t over 2, this e to negative 2t is going to be preserved, and then negative 1 quarter, so I'm going to put it like this, e to the negative 2t. This should do the trick for the first integration. Now we can move on. So we can multiply both sides by e to the 3t. It's never going to be equal to zero and then we are going to integrate everything with respect to t once again. Leaving us with dy e to the t is thus nothing but c times e to the 3t and then plus e to the t, yes, e to the t, um, I'm going to write everything out because this makes integration a little bit easier. And then negative um, t over 2 and negative 1 quarter um, e to the t. Yes, I don't want to do any mistakes, okay? Mistakes happen really quick when doing some simple um, algebra right here. And now, like I said, integrating both sides with respect to t once again. We are just going to get rid of this differential operator. This is going to cancel out, kind of. Okay, this is the mean value uh, thing right here. Okay, now we are going to have y times e to the t being... Okay, we are going to integrate um, factor by factor because we're using the linearity of the integral. It's linear in, uh, in addition, okay? <laughs> If we integrate this, we are going to be left with c over 3 times this exponential function, but c over 3 is yet another constant. I'm going to call it kappa because I'm the kappa papa. Kappa papa. Okay, next, negative. I'm going to start with this thing right here. It's just going to stay how it is. And now for the next one, we are going to integrate this thing right here. Our negative 1 half is going to be preserved, but we have to do integration by parts. It's basically this thing right here, so just getting rid of those factors. And now we can write everything out. t times e to the t, and then negative um, e to the t, right? Okay, plus some arbitrary constants here. I'm, I'm just going to call it c yet again. And well, all that's really left to do is to multiply both sides by e to the negative t, and well, then we are done. Then we are actually done. Meaning overall, it's never going to be equal to zero. Y is thus nothing but kappa times e to the 2t. And then I'm going to start here, plus c times e to the um, negative t, right? And then we are going to get rid of this. So negative one quarter. Next up, we are going to eliminate this by multiplying both sides by it meaning they are going to cancel out, so we are going to get negative t over 2, but also negative and negative is positive, so positive 1 half. 1 quarter and 1 half is going to cancel out to just simply 1 quarter. And then we are done. And I want you guys to notice something. <laughs> here's the best part, and this is a result we have established before on this channel, okay? Up here, 2 has been here, 2 has been the first root of our, of our polynomial. Then we have negative 1 up here. This is actually just this root, okay? And also we have our particular solution right here. 1 quarter minus t over 2. And in another video I'm going to show you something extremely awesome. With this technique you can actually find out a particular solution in like a one-liner, okay? It's, it's, it's so fucking amazing dealing with this D operator. I hope you did enjoy this first application. Next time around we are going to use this thing right here to prove the exact form of linear homogeneous nth order differential equation with constant coefficients. And I'm out, my boys and girls. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more, buy those t-shirts I created or support the channel on Patreon. Up until the next video, have a D-Day. Oh, oh no, don't have the D-Day. This, this is nothing good, to be honest. Have a flammable day. Ciao. <laughs>